Hello and welcome to another special edition of the Tech Talk Tuesday podcast. I'm your host, Ryan McQueenie, and today I am joined by a very special guest. His name is Eric Irvin, and he is the founder and CEO of Reality Shares. This is a firm known for ETF industry innovation and a developer of some funds devoted specifically to investing in the blockchain industry. That's right, another blockchain focused episode for us today on the Tech Talk Tuesday show. Now, Friday Finish Line listeners might remember Eric from when we talked to him about Reality Shares Next Gen Economy ETF. That fund trades under the ticker BLCN. This is one of the top choices for investors looking to get direct exposure to the blockchain industry as it features industry leaders using a unique model designed by reality shares to determine which companies are actively using blockchain tech right now. Today, I talked to Eric about a new fund, the reality shares NASDAQ Next Gen Economy China ETF, which trades under the ticker BCNA. BCNA is the world's first ETF to give investors access to China domiciled companies leading the blockchain technology revolution. And for those that don't know, China is one of, if not the, most exciting market for blockchain currently. We had a chance to talk to Eric about why exactly this is the case and what investors need to know about investing in the Chinese blockchain industry on today's show cover everything from regulatory risks to the entrepreneurial environment in China related to the blockchain industry. I hope you enjoy. Reality Shares already has the Next Gen Economy ETF, which obviously seeks to invest in companies focused on developing blockchain technology around the world. This new fund, however, focuses specifically on blockchain tech in China. Why did Reality Shares find it necessary to offer up this new product? Yeah, and I think it's important to first understand the dynamics of China as a whole. So the the Chinese stock market is the second largest stock market in the world, but until recently, it was it was very difficult for individual investors to invest in it. They could own some companies, which were traded either on the ADRs in U.S. or in Hong Kong, but they couldn't trade in, in the mainland Chinese stock markets. And again, you know, this being the second largest market in the world and massively underinvested by a lot of investors, we felt it was time. And MSCI and, and a lot of other companies are starting to add Chinese companies to the index. So our global index of BLCN doesn't own any of the A shares that trade on mainland Chinese stock exchanges. And China as a whole is a huge proponent. They are all in on blockchain and blockchain technology in a big way. And so we were missing that piece of the the blockchain story, really, by not investing in some of those companies that were traded in mainland China. So we launched this index and then launch the ETF based on that so people could now truly get global exposure by owning both the global ex-China and then the Chinese-only ETF. I think that's a perfect segue because I have it noted here that Chinese companies own three times as many blockchain-related patents as U.S. companies do. And then last year in 2017, China was responsible for more blockchain-related patents than any other country in the world. So as you said, really going all in on this technology, but what is it about China's tech market, its entrepreneurial environment, or overall culture that makes this country specifically ripe for blockchain innovation? Yeah, and and it's not specific. I mean, while they're big, big on blockchain, they're also big on artificial intelligence and big on technology. When, When you go back to the early days of the internet, China and the rest of the world really missed out. And the U.S. became kind of the dominant force in in the Internet, like with all the companies really adopting and embracing Internet early. And now kind of we've seen the fruits of that with with all of these companies that are based here in the U.S. So China sees blockchain as both the Chinese government as well as Chinese companies see blockchain as the next big thing. In fact, in a recent interview, the president of China said blockchain is 
has the potential to be 10 times more valuable than the internet was. So they're you know, heavily embracing it, and they have a lot of innovative companies there, again, kind of second largest stock market in the world. So they're, they're just really all in on, on blockchain. It's part of their five-year economic plan that the government actually puts out every five years. The government itself has invested almost a billion dollars into a, an in a blockchain innovation center where, you know, essentially new blockchain companies can, can start in this um, and kind of have free in, uh, real estate in the space. And so, again, kind of blockchain in China is a big, big deal. Not necessarily cryptocurrencies, but blockchain itself is a huge innovation and, and the country doesn't want to see other companies and other countries, you know, really become the leaders in that space. Right. And you're starting to touch on it a little bit there, talking about kind of how the Chinese government has responded to blockchain tech, you know, thus far kind of creating an environment in which it can be cultivated. But anytime we talk about any sort of innovation in China, especially with these new revolutionary technologies, we do kind of have to stay weary of that regulatory environment. Do you think there's any type of regulatory risk here? You know, I know the Chinese internet market is is heavily regulated. Is this something where we've seen the Chinese government just kind of say, you know, give a green light to these companies? Or, or is there this looming sense that a, a regulatory crackdown could be coming? It's always a risk whenever you're investing in any international company. And, and so you have this political risk and this kind of regulatory risk. Right now, and this is where MSCI finally got comfortable, was we're trying to start to open up outside investors into the country. So the, this is the this program that they announced and have launched and allows now kind of foreign investors to invest. That was one thing. So allowing outside capital to come in creates a lot more transparency and it creates a lot more kind of influence opportunities for other investors to now become a little bit more active in that regard. They've also, you know, it's a pretty developed market, and so we have fairly decent accounting um, methods and, and for the exchange-traded companies. But then when it comes to blockchain as a whole and any kind of patent-type, you know, technology-oriented business, China is, is pretty forward-looking and forward-thinking. So they are going to let some of these companies develop and use this technology in their business. And some of these companies are not they're not necessarily like cryptocurrency companies. Cryptocurrency is just one aspect of blockchain. Blockchain is really like a means to take a lot of friction out of the system. So if you can create a blockchain solution for, say, supply chain management, and again, China being a huge exporter, and if they can really become the dominant force in the supply chain blockchain arena, then that's going to impact the whole planet. And, and so there's a huge opportunity for them, and they see that opportunity, and so they want to let that flourish. Cool. So I'm just going to shift the conversation a little bit more towards Reality Shares' new fund. Can you touch on a few of the top holdings and maybe describe for our listeners why these companies were included? Is this fund going to be full of familiar names or are investors going to need to be doing a little bit of learning ahead of time? Again, it's a, it's a market where it's been difficult for outside capital to invest in. and so the, uh, But the size of these companies are, are very large. And relative, I mean, it's, it's something that a, a U.S. investor who's investing in China has a little bit of learning to do. But there are names in there like that I'm sure people would be familiar with, like Alibaba and Tencent and, you know, some of the major, like, Chinese companies. But there's also a lot of companies in there that are really involved in blockchain that you maybe haven't heard of, like um, Hansun Technologies, which is a software business. And, and Hansun has really led the, the charge in terms of blockchain. They they were an early, early adopter of blockchain technology from a company called Symbiont, where this is the same company that's actually working with Vanguard on their index management systems. So, you know, for blockchain-related technology and YG Soft, which is, 
you know, probably like the seventh largest company in the index right now. It depends on the day. But they have a really high blockchain score. To take it one step back, again, what we do is we go through and we score and identify every company in the world and and relate it based on seven different factors on how much the company is likely to be impacted by their use of blockchain. So we already do a lot of the analysis for investors. We're a quantitative firm, and so we rank each company based on that analysis, and then we score them in a, what's called a blockchain score. And we're pretty transparent about this. You can get all the blockchain scores on our website. But then we just build that index, and the fund invests in those top holdings in that index. There's about 31 holdings in the fund right now. And and so investors can, you know, look at the fund, look at the holdings and see what's in there and then see how they're using blockchain in their business as well. Great. Wrapping things up here, I did want to give you an opportunity to just kind of sound off on the latest news and headlines and drama that has been following the blockchain industry. You've mentioned cryptocurrencies a couple of times already. And I think, you know, there's obviously that kind of unfortunate pairing where people hear blockchain and they only think of cryptocurrencies. So what is one thing you'd like to say about blockchain technology, uh, be it in China or around the world, that the general public or media just doesn't seem to understand right now? Yeah, at a, at a high level, at a, and maybe just to, we've, we've talked about this on a previous podcast, but at a very high level, what, what people need to understand is that blockchain and cryptocurrencies are, um, are two different things. Cryptocurrencies are like a, like a killer app, the first killer app that uses blockchain technology, just like email was the first killer app that the Internet technology allowed for. So when, when we think about blockchain as a technology, Really, what it allows for people to do is to communicate value of, via one another. So that could be stocks, it could be real estate, it could be identity, it could, you know, birth certificates. All of those things can be stored on a blockchain because of its immutability. And it can't be changed. It's record of ownership. So, you know, for example, identity theft. You, you can't have an example of that in in a blockchain-related world. So all of these other use cases that are being sought out in the blockchain space because of this technology, that's really the, the key. Cryptocurrencies are one thing, and they get a lot of headlines because they're so volatile and so interesting. And I'm not um, a opponent of, of cryptocurrencies. I think that they have potential and a lot of potential, but it's going to be a long time before we see all of this play out. So I think that's the main thing is, is lots of companies are embracing this technology. IBM just got a billion dollar contract for, you know, to develop a blockchain solution for other companies. So it's something you should definitely pay attention to and and we view kind of big opportunities like that if you're an early investor, you're likely to see early rewards from from being an investor in kind of the technology and the companies that are innovating in that space. Awesome, Eric. Very motivational and inspiring there. We, we uh, on the show, on uh, this show, Tech Talk Tuesday, are definitely very excited about the many applications of blockchain technology. And, uh, you know, I thought it was great to hear your perspective on blockchain around the world and also specifically the blockchain industry in China. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to speaking with you again soon. Yeah, thank you. And if I guess if um, I did mention it earlier, but if anyone wants to see any of the scores of the individual holdings, we keep all of that at investinthechain.com. 